I'd like to welcome everybody to the special meeting in the Board of Trustees of Smith Vocational Agricultural High School, Tuesday, April 26th, 2022. I'd like to have a call to order, please. Michael Kaling. Present. Julie Spencer Robinson. Present. Richard Aquadro. Present. Mayor Shara. Present. Dr. Kobos is absent. Thank you. At this time, would everybody stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? And Julie is going to lead us. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands. One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. At this point, I would like to read the mission statement of Smith Vocational and Agricultural High School is to prepare students for social responsibility, employment, and post-secondary education through rigorous applied technical and academic programs. Is there any participation by the public this evening? I'll call Marion. Good afternoon, Councillor Marianne Lavarge. As you all know, I was the only councillor who did not support placing the dog kennel wall, the control facility, where the Moose Club is located. I'm here tonight of great support which we have talked about, I don't know how many times with the previous mayor, of trying to locate the facility here at Smith Vocational. It is absolutely in the right direction, the right direction. And I want to thank our mayor, Gina Louise Scherer, for going on site and taking a look. Your eyes tell it all. We look at Smith Vocation, Vocational School as a great school, and there's no question about it. We look at your curriculum, and you have animal science. Here we go. We're opening the doors. This is a fantastic school. I think placing it here is in the right direction. If we look just coming out and going down the road, we have a veterinarian clinic there if the dogs are in stress. This will make our city one of the best of having a facility in a school a Smith Vocational High School, which I said again is great, and I'll continue on saying that. And I know our mayor will help make the right decision of locating a dog facility in a shelter here at Smith Vocational. Our mayor, our previous mayor, David Narkowitz, I don't know how many times he tried to get Smith Volk to be able to open the doors. And because of Greenfield Community College at that time had opened up an LPN nursing school. Now's the time. The doors are going to be open. Please, tonight, when you make a decision, make it right. Let's be one of the greatest, greatest vocational schools in the area. Also, I think if you look at another curriculum for our students here at Smith Folk, is bringing him into that facility, working along with our police control officers. What more could we ask? Thank you. Thank you, Mary. Oh, thank you. Hello, everybody. I'm Benjamin Spencer, um, resident of Northampton, and um, I'm here also um, in support of it's kind of being located at Smith Vocational. I think it's a fantastic opportunity. Um, I just wrote down a few words. I'm, I'm guardly, optimi I'm <laughs> guardly optimistic about the proposal regarding the animal control facility here at Smith Vocational. I'd like to commend everyone involved who worked together to resolve this issue. It seems to me to be a win-win and that this is Northampton at its best. Engaged citizens, responsive government, forward-thinking institutions, everybody collaborating to solve a problem that needs to be solved. Um, I'd like to applaud everyone's efforts, and I'm grateful to all of you um, for trying to get the best outcome um, possible. Thank you. Appreciate your input. This one, you ever, hold on. Yeah. Just the well, I didn't really plan anything, but um, I'm a fisherman, and I'm from Pine's Edge Drive, which um, abuts 
the 196 Cook Ave where the facility <coughs> was going to go. And this seems like a perfect opportunity. There's no residents around. Um, there's no conservation area. And as everyone has said, it's a tie in with the school. This seems like a fantastic opportunity. So I commend you for coming up with this uh, prospect, and I hope that it goes through. Thank you. Appreciate it, Mary. Cindy? Hi, Cindy Wamat, and I'm the coordinator for the union here at Smith Vocational. And my concern is um, about our students, about our members, our faculty, our staff, and safety. That's my number one concern, because this is going to bring more people to our campus. So we just want to know, when are these people going to be on our campus? What part of campus? How are we going to isolate anything? And truly, how are we going to keep our staff, students, and everyone else that lives on our campus safe? Thanks. Appreciate it. Thanks. Uh, presentation by our trustees? Okay. No. Okay. So at this time, we're going to do business. And you have a motion and a second for discussion and possible action to vote for an animal, animal control facility on the Smith Vocational Agricultural High School campus. Move to approve. Second. Okay. Okay. <coughs> I'd like to ask. Thank you, Chair. I just want to give the, the board a little bit of background. Uh, we talked about the background with the subcommittee that we had a few weeks ago, but just to bring the, the full board up to speed and, and the, the public who's in, in uh, attendance this evening, some of the history of where we were and how we're here this evening. So uh, just to reference Mayor Narkowitz, uh, Mayor Narkowitz did reach out to me I'll say multiple times uh, over the last two or three years, uh, asking uh, there's a need from the city to have an animal control facility, and uh, is there any space, any location here on campus that we could house such a facility? And uh, as already has been already mentioned, we don't have any available space on campus at that time. Um, as already mentioned, the, the Greenfield Community College building was being leased by Greenfield Community College for the LPN program. Uh, and there was no other available space on campus. <clears throat> at the same time, as a school, we've been looking at our animal science program and how do we expand that particular program. Specifically, we want to move beyond just simply the livestock concentration. We've been looking at a companion animal concentration, uh, perhaps some point down the road, a vet, uh, a vet assisting program, but specifically around the companion animals, which are the small animals. Uh, how do we expand into that? But we had the same issue. Uh, we have no space for such a program. So we actually hired an architect, this is before the pandemic. Uh, we looked at uh, perhaps a, a new building down back, and the price tag was gonna be about two and a half to three million dollars. And uh, we were looking at fundraising options for that particular program, and then the pandemic hit, to be honest. Um, so as Mayor Narkowitz and I were speaking about this, uh, we saw the potential relationship, but the timelines weren't lining up. For us to raise two and a half to three million dollars to build a particular uh, facility to expand our curriculum, uh, wasn't going to be happening overnight. And it sounded to me through Mayor Narkowitz, this had to happen overnight. Uh, so those were the discussions. Uh, last summer, uh, we also reconnected. Uh, we looked at a couple other spots, uh, school property, and that wasn't going to work as well. So those conversations sort of ended at that point. So I just wanted to, again, recognize Mayor Narkowitz, wherever, wherever he is right now, uh, that he did his due diligence. He did reach out to the school on multiple occasions. Uh, but it wasn't working out where we didn't have a particular program, uh, we had no space, we didn't have any facilities, and we weren't going to raise any money anytime soon for a new facility. Fast forward to this year. <clears throat> so the board a couple months ago uh, voted to not renew the lease for the Green Greenfield Community College building. Uh, so we are going to take that building back as of this summer. Uh, we do uh, plan on expanding into that companion animal concentration this coming, it won't be this coming school year, most likely the following school year hopefully begin to offer that particular concentration. Uh, so as that ball began to move over the last couple of months, I think there were some discussions about, you know, where is the, the current status of the animal control facility? We know in the media there's been some different discussions in some different locations. Uh, and then that sort of then started this whole conversation at this point. So that's why we're sitting here this evening. Uh, we did have a, a subcommittee, just to reference, I'm not to reference the public, but to highlight some concerns that as the administration we did share with the city. Uh, the big two topics I keep harping on would be liability and responsibility. Uh, how do we handle the liability concerns and how do we handle the responsibility concerns? And I would just ask, 
I don't want to steal the, the thunder of both of you, but if you want to talk about some of those, as a school, my main concern was liability and responsibility. Uh, and once those two concerns were sort of alleviated and mitigated, I felt more comfortable. Uh, I do see a potential partnership with our students. As long as those concerns are mitigated, I see some potential. Uh, but this is not a program that as a school we're taking on, uh, which made me feel even better. Um, so anyways, I'd like to have those answers made known to the public. Um, for those who are kind of wondering where the space is, when we took the, the trip down back, if anybody's familiar with the campus, we have the animal science complex down back. We have what we are calling the Greenfield Community College building. It's that white building down back. We have some old tennis courts that have solar panels on there right now. There's a small little parking lot that's sort of in that area. And that parking lot then goes down the Orchard Road, down to the Orchard and Pasture that we have down back. Looking at that current small little parking lot that's sort of between the Greenfield Community College building, the tennis courts, and that Orchard Road, that plot right there, which also kind of abuts up against the hospital parking lot down back, uh, that's sort of the area that we were looking at earlier. So uh, that's where we started with, Doc, uh, with Mayor Narkowitz and I up to this point. And uh, I think that the stars were beginning to align. The concerns, I shared the concerns from the school perspective. And I turn it back to the board for more discussion about it. So, you're right here. Sure. Well, I mean, I'm, and I'm happy to sort of talk about it this from the city side. So, you know, as um, as we've talked about, the, there's the quest for a very needed animal control facility has been many, many, many years. And it's a quest that I inherited from my predecessor, who we've talked about, um, Mayor Narkowitz, who, as has been said, really searched tirelessly throughout the city um, and really did due diligence on this. And during my transition time with Mayor Narkowitz, we went over all of the locations that had been discussed including here, um, and and they were all, you know, discussed how they were not currently possibilities. So it's been a really, really challenging situation. And um, right when I was taking office in January, there was a breakthrough on a location in the city that the city had been interested in for years, but um, had been too expensive for acquisition. And um, this is the former Moose Lodge at the end of Cook Avenue. And um, they're right in the winter, the seller had agreed on a price that was attainable for the city and, and uh, we thought could make work. So um, we moved forward on that site, which had, you know, I, I think had some real advantages because it's it abuts key conservation area and it would um, continue access to that. And we were uh, we were offering um, to continue parking for people there. So um, and it also is in more of a remote area than some of the other areas that we've looked at. But uh, as we all know, there was a lot of concern from that um, from the neighborhoods around there. So, um, a few days after the council voted to approve the purchase of Cook uh, Avenue, um, I was talking to uh, my colleague, uh, trustee, Dr. Spencer Robinson, and she had been reading about the vote in the paper um, and how hard it was, and she suggested that um, we, with the changes that had just happened around uh, the LPM program and the interest in growing the animal science program, that maybe we could open up conversations again. So once I got over my shock, having um, uh, been told this was never going to be a possibility, I reached out to Superintendent Linker Hooker and um, to start the conversation, as you said. And, and we had a great site visit. Um, and Chief Casper, who's here tonight, was there, as well as Pat McCarthy, who uh, was just actually announced today, is our new uh, Director of Central Services. Um, so uh, we walked the site, and I think we answered each other's questions, and we're happy to talk, including the questions that you raised and you just raised again. Um, and I think there is, you know, we're happy to clarify about um, how this building, the animal control facility, will be used and who will have access to it. And Chief, if you'd like to talk to, to that, um, I'd be happy to hand it over to you. Um, but, uh, you know, this is what brought us here today, and I think that this is, as Councilor LaBarge said, is a really exciting um, step forward and and for me you know the sort of the, the synergy between this building um, that the city desperately needs and the educational programming here I think is what um, makes my heart sing so I'm really excited about it Chief. thanks um, yeah so without a doubt definitely a need for an animal control facility I think we're well beyond that conversation but I can share with you right now that I have a snake and a turtle in the station like it's just these challenges go on that um, 
and they're long-term tenants with us for now. So it's just the type of example where we have officers walking by, the snake actually got out the other day, so it's uh, not ideal. So I don't need to explain to you the, the need for it. Without a doubt, um, we have a lot of animals coming into our care, sometimes short-term, sometimes a little bit longer, depending on the situation. Um, and so we need a facility desperately. So I'm thankful to Mayor Narkowitz and Mayor Sherrill, who have, who have now taken this torch and, and um, you know, gone on with it trying to get us settled into a place in the city. Um, as far as how the facility would be used, I think that's a question a lot of people have and I want to make sure we're really clear about that because I certainly understand one of the concerns that was raised about increasing the amount of traffic coming into the facility. Um, this is not a facility that we intend to have open to the public. We're, it's not a, an adoption agency or a type of building where, where members of the public are going to be coming and picking up animals or um, adopting out animals or anything like that. This is a city facility that would be accessed just by um, city employees, and those city employees in most cases would be our animal control officer, Don Ubelaker, um, or our, our part-time uh, animal control officer, or in their off hours it would be a police officer. So if in the middle of the night an officer picks up a stray animal, um, they would bring the animal to this facility and kind of check it in, and then our animal control officer would come into the facility in the morning and, you know, hopefully reunite the animal with an owner if we're able to do that and you know provide care and cleaning, feeding, everything else. So that's our intent with the facility. It has um, some kennels in there designed just for dogs and then it has a, a cat area so there's kind of two separate areas for those different animals and then we also have a quarantine room. There are laws around animals when you're holding on to them. They have to be separate from other animals so there's a quarantine room for that. So hopefully that addresses your questions about you know, how frequently the facility would be visited or if the public would be there. Um, and beyond that, you know, regarding liability and students, I, I certainly understand, and staff as well, I certainly understand those concerns. You know, most of the animals that we have come in are, are household pets, they're domestic animals that we have that are lost or have been um, abandoned um, or, or are neglected and they're being held on to. Um, as evidence in a case if they were neglected in a home. So most of our animals are not vicious or dangerous animals, but certainly if we came across an animal that we felt like really should only be handled by the animal control officer, that is what would happen. We, and we would have to work out those details as we move forward. This would be a new partnership. Um, but when I consider you know, that concern and, and other concerns of students and staff, that's how I see that happening is we have an identified animal that is a risk and we just are sure that that's an animal that students and staff wouldn't have contact with. But our animal control officer has been, you know, we've had an animal control officer for seven years. We have officers handling animals. We've never had any sort of, you know, serious injury from any of our animals um, that we've had. Excellent. Any, any input? Uh, no, but it's a great uh, facility to have a, a dog kennel. Um, Great. It seems like a very synergistic, very excellent. And I can just add from there. After that conversation, and just to piggyback back to the, the educational side of the house, uh, after I heard that those explanations, looking at how can we have that relationship between the school and the city, uh, you know, I think we're obviously looking at our campaign on animal concentration once it gets up and running. And my main concern was again would this become a responsibility not only supervision wise but cost when it comes to the feed and we agreed that the feed and cost would be from the city it would be no budget implication from the school as far as educational oversight educational experience uh, there'd be no responsibility for the staff to be in there tending to the animals but it'd be sort of this supplemental piece where my understanding is a lot of animal control facilities in the area a lot of times they open themselves up to volunteers to come in and walk the dog or whatever and back to the concern about minimizing the public on campus, that potential walking of the dog hypothetically could be an experience for some of our students. Uh, that our students could be the dog walkers hypothetically uh, through the animal, uh, the animal science program. So there is that potential interaction there with our students and staff and animals, which I think would be an educational benefit for our side. Um, there's another component, we've, we already mentioned, is we have a criminal justice program. And you know, within that program, is there an experience where they can sort of shadow or work with the animal control officer to see you know, how do you deal with the dogs? Not to have a direct impact with the dogs. Uh, but, so I think there's an educational value potentially, uh, as long as, again, we're not taking on the responsibility, the costs, uh, but there's more of a supplemental piece. 
The other piece is uh, as we begin to expand uh, into competing animals, there's uh, an investment that we have to have as a school around our facilities. And uh, there's a potential where I think if we work together in the planning of the facility, then what do you need in the facility as far as grooming and washing stations? If there's one or two washing stations in the facility, you know, we need to have washing stations and grooming stations for our program Can we sort of work together. Uh, so I think there's a potential benefit there. Uh, but those are all discussions about I walked away with it, some positive news I just want to share with the whole board. So. Yeah, I agree that one of the things that I thought was exciting was that there's potential for sort of shared infrastructure and in, in, in the building of our building to, um, you know, what, what you need to accommodate with the building that you have that we can work together and, and share some of those resources. And to be an understanding that if, if we know we're in school from 740 to 212 and if our animal science program needs to have access to the access to the grooming station, the washing station on certain days at certain times, then we just work with the city to say that facility would be off limits to the city because our students will be in there. So I think we can make those those plans work. So, Eric, so, back to the chair. <coughs> so uh, as I have stated, we have a, a motion and a second. Uh, we've had this discussion. Can I have some questions? questions too. All right, thank okay. you. Um, uh, first of all, I, I think that uh, the, the serendipity factor is, is just delightful. It, you know, you said the stars aligned for this, and I think that is true. That it, and it happened in such a short period of time where, where you're looking at expanding the animal science <coughs> program and the, um, you know, the, the, we have to have an animal control facility some place in Northampton. Did we have an arrangement with a different um, municipality, or have we always kept our animals in Northampton. We had an arrangement, it was a year-to-year -year arrangement with Amherst. Uh, they have their own animal control facility. Yeah. We had been with them for a while, then we left them for a little while and used a private business, then they closed, and now we're back to Amherst again. Yeah, gotcha. Yep. So this would be terrific for the city, and uh, first and foremost, terrific for the school. Um, how, I, a few questions you answered, one, which is how the students would be potentially interacting with the animals. Um, on campus, and I think that you know that was you addressed that for me for sure. Um, what size would the facility be? Do we have an idea about the square footage of it? It's about two thousand. About two thousand. I think just under two thousand square feet. Okay. For the I current know. facility, but I'm sorry, no. no but it may be moderately adjusted based on the needs of students here. So that's one thing we still need to work out if we're going to be adding in grooming stations, uh, or we have one wash station now. It's going to need to be more. So those details still would need to be. I don't know. Awesome, and I uh, certainly advocate for some kind of educational space integrated into the facility, you know, observation space as well as space to work with the animals. There um, is a training room on the end of the facility, just so you know. So in addition to kind of the traditional kennels that we're probably all vision visualizing, there is a, a room at the end which uh, we had planned to have as kind of a, when you have an animal, you have to do kind of a safety check of that animal to make sure that they are going to be good for adopting out, that they're a good fit for that. Yeah. So there's a training room on the end that certainly could have that dual use would be a great space for that. Awesome. About how many animals um, are would be housed in this facility over the course of a year or month to month or whatever kind of numbers you can provide? Yeah, that's a great question and one that I've been asked a lot, and I apologize in advance. So we're really just... Because of our current situation, we kind of have animals stashed into a whole bunch of places. Mm -hmm. um, we use Amherst sometimes. We're fostering animals in private homes. We had a change in animal control officer. So I, I can guesstimate a number for you, which I would say somewhere between uh, the nights that would have animals, because there's a difference between the number of animals and then because you, yeah. uh, you know, and then you it's may have three animals one use. night, yep. right? Okay, gotcha. Right. Yeah, so, so how many nights? How many nights? I would estimate around 150 in a year. Okay. That's just a rough estimate. I mean, we have these animals in the station now. These are going to be long-term animals. Mm -hmm. So for these animals that we have, like they're probably going to be with us for two months. That's Those are rarer cases, but okay. that can happen. So it's very unpredictable. Most of our animals come in, they're with us for one night because they're lost and we return them to an owner. Yep. Um, others, we ha if we never find an owner, we have to hold on to them for a minimum of 10 days. That's the minimum by the state law. Okay. And then we have to find a, find what's going to happen next. Most of them we adopt out after that. Any more than 10 days would, well, so 10 days is the state, then we're like, oh, we have to find an adopt, adoptable home for them. So then we may spend a little while doing that, maybe a week or something. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and then the only other animals that stay longer than that are the ones that are evidence in a case. And those are the ones that may be long-term stayers. We've had a few of those, but not very many. Like a handful over the years. Thank you. That was a lot of information. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's complicated, yeah. and I wish I could yeah. give you a better number, but that's, that. that's why it's sure. complicated. So your staff would be um, feeding and watering the animals, not the school staff? Right. Our animal control officers yeah. would be feeding. And when they're out or on vacation, our officers would do that. Yep. And then my, my last question is um, around the concerns of the safety on campus. Like, this campus is so porous. Um, it, it just, uh, you know, I, I feel that every time I, I come to the campus, it's the design of it. It's also wonderful for my children who were students here because it felt a little bit more like college when they came here. They loved going from building to building. Right. It, it's really nice. Um, but it also comes with that kind of, you know, the liability of not being able to monitor. You don't have a central access point where you can monitor people coming and going. Um, so I, I would want to know what we might be able to put in place to help with that monitoring. If the city employees, how, how they're going to be identified as city employees, will it be extremely obvious to people on campus? Will they be checking in at the front? Uh, in, the, in the main office, will other people be notified that these folks are on campus? How, like, is it unpredictable? Is it predictable? How will the people here know who is supposed to be coming and going and who's not supposed to be coming and going? I think that's going to be um, very challenging. And, it and with green signage, maybe, <coughs> to the, the public thinks that they can come to directly claim their animals and that it, instead, my understanding is they'll go to the police station mm -hmm. to get, yeah. So they think they can come here and then those are more visitors here. So how do we deter those folks? Um, how is it handled with, with Greenfield or previously with Parks and Rec? Good question. Right. They have direct access to the building. There's no checking in in the main office. And people on campus are comfortable with that? I think over the years it's become second nature. Um, but, but I do share your concerns. I, there's, my main concern as well uh, was sort of that liability and just access to the public, from, by the public to the campus. Uh, from a security standpoint, how do we ensure that we have 550 students on campus who are safe? You know, we have a director of security who does a wonderful job. He's constantly roaming the campus, but it's just one extra layer of supervision that we have. So uh, it is a real concern. Uh, there's no way to sugarcoat that. So how do we, again, mit mitigate that? I think it's communication and, and some type of an agreement. I don't think they, I don't, they being an animal control officer, I don't think we'd necessarily have to check into the main office. I would not anticipate that as an expectation. But um, if we know who they are, I think it would be great for Mr. Brown, our director of security, to, to know who they are. And uh, but beyond that, what happens when we have a community member show up? We had a community member this morning showed up on campus and uh, probably should have been next door, to be honest. Um, so we have those interactions. We have a hospital literally next door, and we have patients who are on campus every once in a while. So um, how do we work together to, to minimize the public being on campus? When you talk to the owners of pets who are lost and found and to be reunited, you'll make clear to them that they are to come to the police station to claim the pet. Yes, yeah, so, so that would be part of the answer is certainly effective communication for an animal control officer to say to people, I will meet you at 29th Century Street to, you know, provide you with your animal. That being said, certainly it's possible that people may wander onto the, you know, onto the campus. Mm -hmm. And I think that's going to be a matter of making sure we have really good signage on the building that says no public access, call this number, and then they would call our dispatch center and be told, like, you can't get your animal there. And we'll have to make that very clear with our animal control officer that no exchanges are to happen here. And further, I would just add that our animal control officer is in a vehicle that's labeled animal control. <laughs> Great. And, and then that's the, the person coming on campus. That's the person coming on campus. And she wears a, a shirt and a jacket that mm -hmm. says animal control on it. And then obviously the other folks coming in would be our officers who are certainly identifiable. So. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Rick. Uh, will there be any opportunity for the carpentry cabinet making and plumbing and electrical <laughs> shops in the building of this facility? So that was part of, the, part of the discussion that we had uh, with the subcommittee, and uh, the short answer is yes. Right. So depending on timing, depending on the scope <coughs> of the project, some of our programs, I think, are more flexible and can get things done in a, a more timely fashion. So depending on the timing and everything else, but yes, that's part of the discussion. So I understand there seems to be a plan already in place with an architect hired, or with what's the, what's the current facility look like? in the planning. 
so happened. It so happened. <laughs> um, so this, this is not planned for this location. This was for one of the iterations of locations. Um, but it gives you, and so, you know, this might be modified, but, but it identifies sort of what the needs are for the building um, and kind of a, a rough idea. So if I can pass this. No, is this what David had in the past? Yes. I think I've seen this. Yes. So One I thing I'd point out as you're glancing at that, because I think it's an interesting safety component that might be a concern that you would have about safety, is if you look at the right side of that building, it has a sally port. So when the vehicles are mm -hmm. pulling in with an animal, if you have concerns about an animal getting loose, they'll pull directly into the sally port, the garage door will close behind them, and then the animals will be brought into the facility. That's great. Will, will, is, will there be some kind of soundproofing built into the building? Yes, we've discussed at length soundproofing for the building. We've got lots of animals here on campus. Yes, yes. So we're used to the sounds of animals. Yeah, but this building is designed to have. Well, I said to somebody today, the dogs can bark until the cows come home. <laughs> and they're going to be next door. <laughs> So, um, going back, we do have a motion a second, and discussion has happened. Uh, we're ready to vote on the animal control facility on the Smith Vocational Agricultural High School campus. Is there any more discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 All right, future business. Uh, May 17th, we have our regular Board of Trustees meeting from 5, at, starting at 5 here in the library. June 21st, regular Board of Trustees meeting at 5 o'clock. Upcoming events, exciting stuff. February 4th, Excellence in Teaching Awards Banquet at 5.30 at Log Cabin. May 31st, Senior Banquet, 6 p.m. in Garden House at Look Park on May 31st. June 1st, Senior Awards Night, 6 p.m. at our cafeteria here on campus. And June 2nd, Graduation, 6 p.m. at John Green Hall. So uh, we have officially said the pandemic is over <laughs> as far as the school. But uh, this time I'd ask for an adjournment. So moved. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank, Thank you, you very much for everybody attending. <laughs>